Welcome, Dr. James Beckett, Sports Card Insights. Here's listener questions, several of them, dealing with the grading and alteration and restoration, some of the episodes I've had in the last month or so. Questions and comments from a variety of uh, listeners and viewers, and I want to bring them out and deal with them pretty quickly, but uh, interesting uh, comments worthy of sharing with a broader audience. So thanks, sponsors, Beckett Media, Beckett Grading, Beckett Authentication, ComC.com, Burbank Sports Cards, Mike Stadium Sports Cards, Heritage Auctions, Huggins and Scott Auctions, Tops, Upper Deck, and Panini. Okay, first comment from Stephen said, grading cards is a scam. And that's in response to some of the, the ones that are, actually, Stephen, it's not a scam. Basically, there are too many checks and balances. There's a competitive landscape, several grading companies. Nobody is forcing anybody to do anything. It's something that works for many people. They understand the system. They understand grading. It is a second opinion, but it's a second opinion that uh, most people trust. And if they did not trust it as much, then that particular grading company would have some difficulties. It's part of the hobby landscape now. Rather than think it's a scam, think it's a black box, and we don't know uh, how a card goes in and it comes out with a grade. With PSA announcing they're going to start doing grading notes, I like that for them. I'm a big fan of the report card. That was an important uh, part for me for uh, BGS. Okay, another one from Beansball Card Blog about grading logistics. And he's just, if people don't think a good job is being done on the grading, then just crack them out and go somewhere else. If you think all your cards are 10s, then the best way to find out that's not true is to take the nine that you got from a certain company, crack it out, take it to another company, perhaps getting another nine. I think the variation between grading companies is a lot less than people think. They're sure, occasional mistakes are made, but I think if you get a nine from one card company, my best bet is you're going to get a nine from another reputable company. And I was thinking about this because, okay, so you're at a show and I'm I'm just at the show and I just listen. And, and what if there was like a Down syndrome kid that walked up to a dealer at a show and he said, I've got a Wemby card and it's a 10. What would the dealer do? Say, hey, kid, not interested. I think the dealer would say, hey, l l let me see what you got there. Now, maybe it really is a 10. We just don't know. The point is, look at the card. Don't look at the person. <laughs> it's not the bear. It's what is the card. And so just get a second opinion and don't be judging something by who has it, whether it's a little kid or uh, an older person or a woman or any other thing. We get medical opinions frequently. A lot of times it's because we don't like the first opinion. Yeah, but that seems to be okay. I tell my friends, get a third opinion to go to a doctor and say, I want a third opinion because that implies to that doctor that, hey, he's already gotten two opinions. Maybe they're in opposition or maybe doesn't agree with them. Uh, I'm going to take a fresh look at this. So anyway, Card Alchemy wrote in about hot dog juice when I was talking about the Cons Wieners and Stallmeyer, all those hot dog packages that there's hot dog juice <laughs> on the card. That's a foreign substance. Now, it was not where the card was made, but it was in the packaging. Would that be detectable by grading companies that there's uh, some kind of hot dog juice? Is that okay? I think it would be. You didn't do anything wrong. It's the way the card came. Uh, in fact, one of the things I know from uh, collecting really seriously those kinds of cards back in the 70s is that occasionally you'd find hot dog cards without any hot dog stain. And they, they, it's not that they were illegitimate. They were very legitimate. But if they'd never been in a hot dog package, then they they, they were never issued. They're factory generally in really excellent near mint condition sometimes for something there's no way it could be if they were in the package but hot dog juice i guess we could try to figure out what the chemical makeup is that's okay from mookie jilson talking about pinholes and thumbtacks and how that affects and he mentions there are cases where a pinhole adds value to a card let me explain how i think that can be right. Because if you have a mint card without a pinhole and a mint card with a pinhole, that mint card of the pinhole is not mint anymore. And I don't know if it's a one or two or three, but it gets seriously downgraded. And maybe you get a numer numerical grade. If it was more defaced, it might just be authentic. But what uh, Mookie might be getting at is that the value aspect, not just the price you're going to pay and the value, which is what you pay versus the enjoyment you get, 
from a pinhole card that you can't even see the pinhole except on close examination, you're going to be able to buy that card for a small fraction of what it would cost without the pinhole. So in that sense, if it crushes the price, then it would turn out to be a, a good value in the sense of that. Card Hunter mentions agreed with a lot of things we we're saying about authentic altered and having some specificity of what the alteration was and that Mike Baker or somebody like that could have some additional stickers. Mike Baker does that, but there's lots of others that could do that too. Again, in the grading notes, they could have that. Carl Dykstra writes in about restoration and art and how usually with old masters, he mentions Van Gogh, uh, they're trying to preserve the original artist work. But Carl, those are all one of ones. Those are individual things. And there are coatings that are put on those paintings, in some cases in the museums to protect them against the light. And so adding that or then later subtracting it to lighten it up or darken it up, those things are understood. They're one of ones. They're not graded. They're evaluated as one of one. When you see a one of one, whether it's graded in fact, well, even with this authentic, there's some PMGs, some green PMGs that are just authentic that go for big bucks. Uh, not one of ones, but they're pretty close to one of ones. But when you're looking at one of ones in the old master world of painting, even though these great paintings are one of ones, the old masters iterated. They didn't just do one. They did some pencil sketches or charcoals, and they were working it out, and so they would do different versions. So they could have several one-of-ones that are just very slightly different, as this old, brilliant uh, painter was uh, seeking perfection or to capture exactly uh, what he wanted. So, Carl, I agree with you in that when something is done to a card, it ought to be revealed. And I think the uh, grading companies are getting better and better at detecting these kinds of things. And if they declare it, then I don't have a problem with that. If the card looks nicer, that's fine. But I don't want to pay a mint price for a card that used to be VG that's been doctored. I want the truth and how it's laid out. Okay, then Evan Frazier commented about my conversation with Brian Gray about restoration. And this is his quote. He said, God agree with James. So I think he's talking about me, but I'm an old fogey. Okay, I don't think I'm an old fogey. Brian's an old soul, but he's not an old fogey either. I'm just wondering these restoration questions. I'm wondering if they break according to age, that the older collectors are more purists, vintage, leave my cards alone. I want to collect them in the way like Mike Moynihan. I like them to be handled. I don't want them to be dog-eared, but I don't want something that's pristine if it's 100 years old. That doesn't look natural. And to unbelievably restore something, I'm, I wonder, I, I really think it does break according to age. If you had a 20-something or a 30-something, I think they might be more flexible. But a 60-something or a 70-something, I think they're thinking, hey, it's been good enough all these years. Although, I'm telling you, 50 years ago, when I was getting deep into this and I was in the know, I was in the inner circle, there were restorations, paper restores, art restores that were building up corners, filling in pinholes and doing things like that. And they did put a micro dot or a mark so that it could be, so that it would be, but I'm sure some of them were passed off as, as they were great looking cards when they were done. So that's been around at least 50 years. Like I said, I just want truth in packaging. I don't want to pay extra for uh, restoration. I want to pay a fair price for, for the card that I want. Another one from Mookie. We were talking, I had mentioned about the VIN number for a car, which is the vehicle identification number, I think. Then you get, you can get a Carfax report uh, to know what happened to that car. And so he was talking about instead of a VIN, you'd have a SIN or a CIN number for a card. Then you get a card fax report that would uh, track that card. Just when a car is stolen, sometimes they scrape the VIN number. Cards, if it was embedded in the card or it was a, a QR code or RFID, just something to where you could know this card is unique and then you could know its history, whether it be blockchain or whatever, and that could happen. It's going to happen. Finally, from Stooks, he says, his line is rubbing off the gum powder or wax residue with a, a sock or a nylon. That's been done for a long time. It's pretty obvious it's sitting there and you can easily wipe it off. It wasn't intended to be there. It wasn't produced there, but it came up from the wrapper in many cases. And then he, this is the other one. He says he's okay with soaking stamps out of an album. And that's a little bit questionable 
because it depends on what you're soaking the stamps out with. Although some people just think you shouldn't even soak the stamps. In the album, that's the way they are. It's too late, too bad. But some of the stamps are put in with water-soluble or very easily released paste or glue or some. You can soak them to get even the back damage. Stamps are blank-backed in most cases. And so if they're in an album, I've actually had some stamps that I just cut around the album I cut the page that had the stamp on it and just left it to the back. And if it was a blank back thing, I charged less for it, but I still sold a few of those. Again, no deception there. The problem becomes when you're soaking these cards, if it's just water, depending on how you dry them out, they get warped or surface bubbles or something. And if you use some kind of a chemical treatment to the water, if it's not distilled water with no properties in it or saliva, which does have chemicals in it, then there's some people who say that's not okay. Just to end this on the note of where Brian and I left it, when Brian Gray and I were talking about restoration questions, is that if there's a parallel grading system, I, I have no problem with that. If it's a restored card, it gets an R prefix for the grade or something. So there's truth. I think that could resurrect a bunch of cards that look terrible, that with a little bit of treatment would look a lot better. I, I just I don't want to deceive anybody. But if somebody wants a, a nice looking card, if it's restored and it's way cheaper, it, it'd be a way for people to enjoy the hobby without paying an arm and a leg. Because when you have high grade vintage, some of which has been doctored and not detected, that's very upsetting. I think most of it is not, but some of it is. And I just like for the card companies to get so good at detecting that they still slab it, but they slab it with an indication that this is what's really, it's talk about graders notes. I mean, this would be part of the graders notes, but I'd really like to see it on the slab, not as something that could get lost. And I don't want to have to look it up. That's why I like the report card because it's right there. Anyway, thanks everybody. Have fun with the hobby. And these are questions that uh, I think as Brian and I said, will be resolved in the next five years. I think there will be a greater acceptance not blowing it off, but just they're not going to be considered uncollectible. They'll be less valuable, but they'll still have value, and people won't be ashamed to have a restored card in their collection. That's what I'm saying. Thanks, everybody. Be back again tomorrow or in a couple of days with another episode.